In this lecture, we will review the clinical interview and how it is conducted. The interview is often the first contact between client and clinician. Clinicians use it to collect detailed information about the person's problems and feelings, their lifestyle and relationships, and other personal history. They may also ask about the person's expectations of therapy and motives for seeking it. Beyond gathering basic background data of this kind, clinical interviewers give special attention to those topics they consider most important. Psychodynamic interviewers try to learn about the person's needs and memories of past events and relationships. Cognitive behavioral interviewers try to identify information about the stimuli that trigger responses, consequences of the responses, and assumptions and interpretations that influence the person. Humanistic clinicians ask about the person's self-evaluation, their self-concept, and values. Biological clinicians look for signs of biochemical or brain dysfunction. And sociocultural interviewers ask about the family, social, and cultural environments. Interviews can be either unstructured or structured. In an unstructured interview, the clinician asks mostly open-ended questions. In a structured interview, clinicians are prepared. Sometimes they use a published interview schedule, a standard set of questions designed for all interviews. Many structured interviews include a mental status exam, which is a set of questions and observations that systematically evaluate the client's awareness, orientation with regard to time and space, attention span, memory, judgment, insight, thought content, and processes. It also includes a mood evaluation and appearance. A structured format ensures that clinicians will cover the same kinds of important issues in all of their interviews and enable them to compare the responses of different individuals. Although most clinical interviews have both unstructured and structured portions, many clinicians favor one kind over the other. Unstructured interviews typically appeal to psychodynamic and humanistic clinicians, while structured formats are widely used by cognitive behavioral clinicians who need to pinpoint behaviors or thinking processes that may underline abnormal functioning. Although interviews often produce valuable information about people, there are limits to what they can accomplish. One problem is that they sometimes lack validity or accuracy. Individuals may intentionally mislead in order to present themselves in a positive light or to avoid discussing embarrassing topics. Or people may be unable to give an accurate report in their interviews. Individuals who suffer from depression, for example, take a negative view of themselves and may describe themselves as poor workers or inadequate partners when that isn't the case at all. Because different clinicians can obtain different answers and draw different conclusions, even when they ask the same questions of the same person, some researchers believe that interviewing should be discarded as a tool of clinical assessment. 
Clinical tests are devices for gathering information about a few aspects of a person's psychological functioning from which broader information about the person can be inferred. Projective tests require that clients interpret vague stimuli such as ink blots or ambiguous pictures or follow open-ended instructions such as draw a person. Theoretically, when clues and instructions are so general, people will project aspects of their personality into the task. To be useful, assessment tools must be standardized, reliable, and valid. Most clinical assessment methods fall into three general categories. The clinical interviews, tests, and observations. Types of clinical tests include projective, personality, response, psychophysiological, neurological, neuropsychological, and intelligence tests. Types of observation include naturalistic observation, analog observation, or self-monitoring.